Natural light is the cheapest and most convenient way to light your boudoir photos, but to take images to a professional level, you have to know how to use it effectively and efficiently. Today I'm breaking down my five favorite natural light tips to take your photos from good to great. Hey boudoir photographers, are you ready to be totally booked out with high paying clients? I'm Tracy Lynn and I went from side hustle photographer to running a million dollar boudoir photography business working just 30 hours a month. That's right, just 30 hours a month. On this podcast, I tell you how I did it and how you can too. Hey there and welcome back. I wouldn't say I'm a natural light photographer because I know how to add light when I need to, but I prefer natural light and I know how to use it well. I've studied with some of the best in the industry as far as posing and lighting, such as Jerry Guionis. I know that I've talked about him before, but I've actually been to three workshops with him and a private workshop at he and Melissa's house. So if you can't tell, he's my photography idol. And on top of that, I've also photographed over 850 sessions since 2017. So you could say that I've had some practice. I know my lighting and I know my posing pretty well, and I understand how light falls and what it will do when it falls depending on the conditions. I'm going to add some of my work to the show notes for reference, so if you want to see what I'm talking about as we're going through, be sure to click the show notes in the episode description. Mostly with this episode, I want you to understand that lighting your clients well will take your work to the next level. And yes, it will help you book more clients and keep your schedule full because your portfolio is definitely a factor in getting more clients. I say it all the time that I've seen the most talented photographers fail and decent photographers succeed. The difference is who takes the business side seriously. That's all very true, but also your portfolio still matters. Your work will help you book more clients. So take it seriously. My first tip to take your boudoir photos from good to great is to understand short, broad, and flat light. These are the three most important types of lighting for boudoir and portrait photography, unless you're photographing a man, but that's another subject for another day. So let's start with flat light. Flat light is when your light source is facing directly at the front of your subject and lighting the face evenly. Flat lighting on a face means that your subject is well lit and you're unable to see any shadows along their face. I personally think that this type of lighting is great for more mature skin and another type of lighting is broad light. Broad light means that the shadow side of the face is furthest from you and this type of light can make a face look fuller. So it's ideal for those with very narrow faces. And then we have short light. That's my favorite type of light. Short light means that the shadow side of the face is closest to you and it really helps to sculpt the face. In almost all of my images, I use short light because I think it's the most beautiful light. But short light can show more imperfections such as bags under the eyes or wrinkles. But really, that's where retouching comes in. After retouching, short light will still look great on more mature skin because of how it sculpts the face. Again, I have examples in the show notes if you want to see exactly what I'm talking about. My second tip to take your boudoir photos from good to great is to use shadows to sculpt the body. Using shadows to sculpt the body will make the chest and the booty look fuller. And thankfully, this is trendy nowadays thanks to the Kardashians. The easiest way to do this is to position the body away from the light, and this will cause the light and shadows to sculpt the face in a flattering way. I have a few examples in the show notes, so be sure to take a look. And remember, women are coming to you to feel more confident in their bodies, as well as possibly give a gift to their significant other. Everything about the pose and the light needs to be flattering, or I would recommend just not taking the shot. Here's a tip to learn to see the light. Take your hand and move it around. See how it falls in the crevices of your hand. It's going to do the same on the client's body. So the next time you're in the studio, have your clients move around similarly to what we just did, and then you'll be able to see how the light falls on their body. That's going to help you see what you feel is most flattering so that you can really develop your style. My third tip to take your boudoir photos from good to great is to use direct and full sunlight. My outdoor images are almost all in full sun, as much as possible at least. I love to use direct light, full sun, indoors when possible as well, and I'm going to have a photo of that on the blog as well so that you can see what exactly I'm talking about. 
I really love Full Sun because the colors are just vibrant and beautiful and there's just nothing like it. And the other thing, it's going to set you apart from other photographers because most photographers are scared of it. So that's another advantage to using direct sunlight. You're really going to have a style of your own. But using full sun or direct sun really requires you to pose more than any other type of lighting because if the client moves even a little bitty bit, you're going to miss your shot because the shadows are very, very harsh and they need to be placed specifically where you want them. There's a big contrast between the shadows and the light when you're in full or direct sunlight. I want you to know that the very first time that you photograph in full sun, you're probably going to struggle. This is normal. I actually hadn't shot outdoors in full sun in a while, and a few weeks ago, I really struggled during my outdoor sessions for about the first 15 minutes. Once I found my groove, it was fine, but the first few minutes were messy, and the struggle really showed in those first few photos. Lesson learned, I should have definitely been practicing before my sessions. All of that to say, just find a model, practice shooting in full sunlight before your first session in full sun. My fourth tip to take your boudoir photos from good to great is to add light as needed. Some days are overcast. It doesn't matter where you're from. You're going to have an inconveniently dreary day sometimes, and you might need to add light. But to add light, you have to understand how to add it, and it needs to be done in a quick and efficient way so as not to slow down your sessions. My two very favorite options for adding light are my Westcott Solix. It's continuous light, and it adds just enough but not too much. I really think this is the best option for added natural light. And then my Westcott ice lights, if I'm wanting to be a bit more dramatic, my husband would tell you that I love to be dramatic, but that doesn't apply to this. (laughs) I'm not sure, but I think that these ice lights are actually discontinued, but I do know that you can get knockoffs on Amazon because I have them in my Amazon store and I will link that in the show notes as well. Of course, there's other options like strobes or speed lights My recommendation is to find what works best for you. Don't just choose something because a photographer you admire is recommending it. I've done that and I ended up selling two sets of strobes because I didn't love using them. Just because another photographer recommends them to you does not mean that that's the best option for you. The best option is the option you feel is the right one for you. So make sure that you practice, do your research and see what you like best. My fifth tip to take your boudoir photos from good to great is to pose from head to toe. Do not make your clients model for you. You need to tell them what to do. That's why they're paying you. And that means you have to understand posing as well. Let's talk about a few of my favorite tips. First of all, put all the S curves in her body. The more curves you create, the better. It helps the image look sexier because there's more to the composition than just like a straight body. There's just more going on overall. For the same reason you want S curves, make sure you also bend what bends. That means wrists, elbows, move her arms around, move her toes, move her legs. Like make sure anything that bends is bent. Make sure there is nothing straight unless you're intentionally wanting that particular body part to be straight. And there are certain circumstances where you would want that. Another thing to do, be mindful of your composition. The rule of thirds applies to boudoir as well. No matter what pose I'm photographing, how zoomed in or zoomed out I am, I always make sure that I'm focusing on the rule of thirds in each image. That might mean that her eye is in the top right corner and her legs are in the bottom left. It might mean a standing pose and I have her on the very far right third of the frame, but almost every photo I take, I have some sort of version of the rule of thirds in it in some way. And lastly, before you take the photo, before you click the shutter, check the entire frame. Make sure everything is exactly where you want it, her body, her toes, her face, her mouth, her hair, and make sure the light is falling exactly how you want it to fall. Before you click the shutter, ask yourself these questions. Does she need to turn her head more towards the light? Is every finger and every toe where you want it? Could she arch more? Does she need to lift her chin or maybe lower it? Is everything in the frame exactly how you want it? If you're super mindful of all of these things, 
when you're calling and crawler correcting before an ordering session, it's going to be so much faster. Because I pay attention before I click the shutter every time, I rarely have more than 125 to 150 photos to actually call through every session. And I only show between 60 and 90 at each ordering session. So I'm only taking that down to about half or even a little over half. That's how few I have to take out. And that's why it only takes me 10 minutes to prep a session for an ordering session. Everything is right in camera. I'm just going through, making sure there's not any duplicates and maybe fixing the shadows and the highlights a little bit. Now, if you only get one thing from this episode, I want you to know that I love natural light. I think it's great to be a natural light photographer, but you still have to understand light. You still have to know when to add it, when to adjust the pose, where to place your client in the light. This is a photography business podcast, and I find myself saying it often, and I said it early in this episode. Super talented photographers fail at business, while decent photographers can be successful. Regardless of your talent, though, your portfolio has to be solid. It doesn't have to be the best in the entire world, but it has to be good if you want to stay booked out and have a successful business. Your ideal client has to visualize herself in your portfolio and want to be in your portfolio. She may not actually be in it if she doesn't sign the release, but she should want to be in it and see herself in it. I still think that you need to focus more on your business if you want to take it full time, but sometimes you do need to focus on your art. So take these tips, make them your own and work them into your style. And if you need a little help, be sure to check out my session prep guide for boudoir photographers. Remember, boudoir photography is an intimate thing. Women are putting their trust, their confidence, and to be honest, their mental health in your hands. And that isn't something that we should take lightly. And I know that you don't. Sometimes though, it can happen unintentionally. And this guide is going to help you get clients very comfortable very quickly during the session with my four icebreaker poses. And it's going to remind you to treat each woman with care by avoiding like certain words during the session and just overall get them comfortable with you and make sure that they have the best session possible. If you're interested in this, click the link in the show notes to download this free guide. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sustainable Freedom with Boudoir Photography. Please be sure to rate and follow so that you never miss an episode. They drop every Thursday and they're always full of super actionable information for you to apply right now in your boudoir business. Until then, make your next shoot your best shoot.